Okay, so we're going to talk about the chi-squared test. Um, this is used usually um, uh, for our purposes is to see if the the results of a genetic cross experiment are what we expect, and it will tell us, yeah, they're very much what we do expect, or no, they're not, and there's something unexpected going on. Okay, so the, probably the easiest way to to do it is to go through an example, right? So uh, we're talking here about um, the fruit fry, fruit fly Drosophila, uh, and there are two mutants. Okay, so we've got this one, the white-eyed mutant. These are recessive mutant. So the uh, li little e for that, um, and big E is the normal. So if you are heterozygous, you'd have normal coloured eyes, which are blue. If you're the double recessive, then you'd have white eyes. The other mutant we're looking at is this black body. They normally have a kind of a, a brown body and uh, the mutant allele little b gives it a black body once again if you are heterozygous then they'll have a normal brown colored body a uh, double mutation they'll have the black body okay uh, so um drosophila you can mate a male and a female drosophila they'll the female will lay about uh two or three hundred eggs uh, they'll hatch within a week and then you can count the offspring. So, so that's why it's been used a lot, because it's a very quick uh, model to use. Right, so we've got two heterozygotes here, for heterozygotes for both traits. Okay, the male and the female. And we, you know, I'm not going to uh, um, do the little diagram, but anyway, the possible phenotypes are, first of all, we've got... Um, this one, which is a uh, normal, normal, normalized, normal body. Then you could have a normal body, sorry, normalized black body, white eyes with a normal body. And then finally the double mutation where you've got white eyes and the black body. And we know if you do, uh, if you try and predict the ratios you should expect there, you get a nine to three to three to one ratio. Okay, so in this experiment, the, we'll say that the Drosophila managed to lay um, uh, uh, 241 eggs, okay, and they all hatched out, and they were, <coughs> what would you expect there? Right, so um, for this one, you'd expect, how do I work out 136 there? Well, you'd expect it to be 9 over 16, so 9 plus Nine plus three plus three plus one is sixteen. So nine sixteenths of two hundred forty-one is one hundred thirty-six. Likewise, for the other one, you'd expect forty-five of the single mutation to the black body, uh, forty-five of the single mutation to the white eye and the phenotype, and then when you see both mutant phenotypes, that would be just fifteen. Right. So in this experiment. Let's see, let's see what we get there. We get, uh, so that's expected. The actual, so the observed, we got 129 of them, of, um, 50 of those, 52 of those, and uh, 10 of those. So looking at that, you can see that those observed values are not very different from the expected values, and we're we're almost sure here that this is what's going on. Um, what, we, what I should write down here is, what we're gonna do is we're gonna test the null hypothesis. So the null hypothesis is basically saying, there's no difference between expected and observed values. Okay, that's what we're saying. Now, obviously, there is some difference there, um, but it's not a very big difference. So, we, we, we're trying to see is, you know, are the results we're getting here, are, is it reasonable, you know, by just by pure chance, you're never going to get the exact results. Uh, by pure chance, does that tend to suggest that 
the null hypothesis is correct. Right, now to do that, to test the null hypothesis, we're going to use the chi-squared. Uh, we're going to get a value for chi-squared. Now I'll write down what chi-squared is equal to. So chi-squared, chi sorry, this chi, the chi-squared statistic is equal to, uh, you add up the, for each one, will you do the observed minus the expected, and then you square that value and divide it by the expected value. So for each <coughs> of those, you will, uh, for each of these, you're gonna do that. So let's go ahead and do that. So um, I'll write down here then. So we've got, let's do uh, O minus E, observed minus expected. So that's going to be uh, seven for that one, five for that, seven for that, and five for that. But we need to, if we look here, right, is that squared? So we're going to square that. So we're going to get uh, 7 squared, 49, 5 squared, 25, 7 squared again, 49, 5 squared, 25. But we need to divide that by the expected value. The expected value is um, 136. So, um, that's the fraction there, 136 over 45, that one over 45, and this one over 15. So we're gonna um, add all those up together. This of course means sum of, so we're gonna add all those fractions together to get our chi-squared statistic value. So here's our chi-squared value. I've done that on a calculator earlier and it was equal to 3.68. Now, let's just have a think about what, what the, let's just think about the size of this thing. What does it tell us? Right, if our observed values were exactly the same as the expected value, so if that was 136, well, observed minus E would be zero. So zero squared is, it, zero divided by anything is going to give you zero so that would be zero and then okay they'd all be zero so your chi squared value would be zero so if if you've got perfect result perfectly exactly what you expected chi squared would be equal to zero and you'd be more or less 100 percent sure that if there is no difference between the expected and the observed your null hypothesis is correct on the other hand, as, as, these, the, as these values, the observed minus E get bigger, as that value gets bigger, that's going to tend to make all of these fractions here bigger. That's going to make your chi-squared value big. So the bigger the value of chi-squared, it's starting to become unlikely that those, that, that, that those results could occur just by pure chance. Uh, if your null hypothesis is correct. So this is beginning to tell us that there's something else going on. Our null hypothesis is not right. The, what we're observing is not what we expected at all. Right, how do we actually put a value on that then? Right, so we need to use this table here, which has been lurking down the bottom. I'll just write down what was our chi value it was 3.68. So our chi value, I'll scroll up here. We got, it was equal to, 3.68. Now, first of all, on this table here, you see this thing called degrees of freedom there, which I've drawn an arrow to. Right, what does that mean? Well, it's n is the number of outcomes possible, which are four different outcomes, four different phenotypes, minus one. So that means we've got three degrees of freedom. And because you're nearly always using this for testing these dihybrid crosses, then yeah, you will have three outcomes. So um, that's usually, sorry, four outcomes. So the degrees of freedom is, is three. So that means we need to look at this particular line in the, in the chi-squared table. We're looking at this one here. Right, now let's, we have got a chi-value of 3.68, right? Um, let's say, well, what's the number, the closest number we've got there? Well. Our value obviously comes somewhere between that value, which is 2.3, and 
and that value which is 4.1. Okay, let's just imagine if we have 4.1. Now it says probability, 0.25 there. It says probability is equal to 0.25. What does that mean? Well, it means that you have probability as percentage, which is sometimes a bit easier. So that means 25% of the time, if you did this experiment, you would get results With a chi value that like with a with a chi value squared of this. So, uh, in other words, like twenty five percent of the time, just by pure chance, you would get results like we got there that are a little bit different from the expected. Um, but because you're getting that, you know, twenty five percent of the time, that means that really we've got to say, yeah, that the results are really very much what we expected. Let's say if the value got down to like p is equal to um, 0.1, that would mean that 10% of the time, you do the experiment, 10% of the time you would get results that we got. So that's, that's okay. It's not quite as good, but it's okay. So when do we say it's not okay? Now, most people uh, accept the value that this, the smallest value probability that you should accept is 0 0.05. So that means 5% of the time. So we're saying if we got a p value of 0.05, 5% of the time, just pure chance would make us get results very similar to the ones we've got. So one in 20 times, really, you would get those results. And that may not seem very much to you, but that's generally ex generally taken as being acceptable. That is that is taken as proof. If you get a p-value of, of at least that, that your null hypothesis is correct. Right, let's see what, what value of p that we got. Um, here, well, from our chi value of 3.68, it's somewhere between 0.5 and 0.25, let's say about 0.3. So, and that is, so that's like 30%, which is obviously a, a lot bigger than 0.05%, or 0.5 or 5%. So that means um, that our null hypothesis is correct probably no hypothesis is accepted there's a 30 percent chance that just by doing um that experiment you would you would end up with a, a chi value uh three of that much which would give you a probability of that um let's just let's just talk about what's this that means here Look, the the biggest value of chi we would we would accept would have to be 7.81. Any bigger than that, chi gets any bigger than that, your null hypothesis is probably wrong. Okay, so just that, that's that's basically basically it. Right, let's just have a have a little graphical way of thinking about that. So what I'm going to say is the um, we expect this uh, nine to three to three to one ratio. So in other words, we would expect always nine sixteenths of the offspring yeah, to be uh, offspring or mortuary uh, to be the you know with no mutation yeah that's what we'd expect nine over 16 is as a percentage is nine divided by 16 is 50 about 57 percent okay that's what we'd expect so Let's see if we did this experiment. We, this is just one cross. And if we got like a, a load of, we've got loads of people to do it. Get give them more pairs of software each. Get them to mate and do it. Okay. And then along this axis, we're going to ask them what was the percentage of your no mutant phenotype. All right. I'm going to put like forty percent there. Fifty percent. Sixty percent. 70%. Now, if you've got, if you do this experiment enough times, okay, well, this is the number of times people get that. So the frequency, you get that result. Um, you, right, this is the most likely value, isn't it? Okay, so you get some, the results would look something like that. Okay, so there's like a normal distribution, you may have seen that. So, most people, the most frequent result would be the one you expect, like 57%. Okay, so that's fine. Now, 
say if you did the experiment and you got a value of like 60%, okay, 60%. Right, you can see there that um, that is still within the realms of possibility. A lot of times people do that experiment, look, and they're getting six, they do get 60%, maybe one in 20 times, I don't know, from the graph. So that would probably, the, the, the p-value for, for that value would, pro you know, would probably be about equal to 0 0.05. So if you did get 60 offspring, 60% uh, uh, of your offspring with no mutation, that would probably be okay. However, if you did the experiment and you got one 70%, that would tell you that that just doesn't fit in with the expected results. No one would get 70 or very, very few, very, very few people. So the chances are there, if you're seeing that, your null hypothesis is, 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 is not true. Likewise, if you got a number like you only get 40% with the no mutation, that's not under this green, uh, in this green curve. It's way, it's a, it's, a, it's a massive outlier. The chances are that your null hypothesis is incorrect. There's no way chance is gonna throw up a result as different as that. Let's say if you've got like 51%, well, that's you know, 51% there. Well, that, you know, definitely, that is well within the curve. Uh, you definitely accept the hypothesis. So that's just a bit of a visual thing of what, what this means.